Dear friends, on this fourth Sunday of Advent and always, grace, peace, and mercy be yours. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from the Gospel of Matthew, one of the Christmas Gospels. I'm going to read part of it again for us. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. This morning, I'd like us to think about putting ourselves in Joseph's shoes. Lots talked about Mary, and rightly so, but not so much Joseph. Just for a moment this morning, for a few minutes, let's put ourselves in Joseph's shoes. Consider the culture back then. Engagement was a little different than it is today. Engagement was a more serious thing than it is today. Engagement was almost like being married, with one huge exception. The couple didn't live together, and they weren't living as husband and wife, and engaging in physical activities that husbands and wives engage in. <coughs> Joseph and Mary had been pledged to each other in arranged marriage. Joseph was a carpenter, an upstanding Jewish man in his community, trying to do the right thing, trying to make ready the marriage to his wife, their family someday, get everything ready, and then lo and behold, his supposedly virgin bride-to-be gets pregnant. Now just imagine that for a second in those days. I know part of the problem, we'll talk about this in a second, in our day and age it's hard to imagine the scandal. But in that day it was. An unbelievable scandal. A, a town ripping wide open scandal. Huge. So Joseph was left with this terrible dilemma. What to do? This girl that I have been pledged to marry and have been pouring my heart and soul into for all this time, getting ready for this marriage and this lifelong union and the family we're going to have. She's pregnant, and I know it's not from me. And the town was whispering. Of course they were. It would be natural that they were. It wasn't supposed to happen. And in the eyes of everybody that knew at that particular moment, when Joseph knew, it meant only one thing. Mary had been unfaithful to him. She must have loved another. So what could he do? If Joseph was a, a vengeful, prideful man, according to the law in those days, again, our modern sensibilities find this hard to believe, but we're dealing with first century culture that our Lord was born into. If Joseph would have been a prideful and vengeful man, he could have taken Mary before the city council, had her publicly and deeply humiliated, and very possibly had her stoned to death for what everybody perceived she had done. That was the reality. That was the reality that Joseph was living with. But we're told Joseph was not a vengeful and prideful man. He was a good man. A decent man who had wanted nothing but to marry his betrothed and to have a family and raise them together serving the Lord and worshiping the Lord. So we're told Joseph made up his mind to simply divorce her quietly. He didn't want to put Mary through more than, than any of that. He didn't want to hurt her any more than everything had already happened. He didn't want her to suffer more. He just was going to put her away quietly. But then, put yourself in Joseph's shoes when she tells you 
Joseph, it's not another man. An angel of the Lord came to me and told me I was going to get pregnant. And I told him I can't because I'm not married to my betrothed yet. I'm not married. I haven't been with the man. It's impossible. And he tells me nothing is impossible with God. Mary, you have been chosen to have the Son of God. Put yourself in Joseph's shoes then. If it wasn't tough enough already, now he's being told this story that just, again, in Joseph's shoes, none of us would have believed. We would have thought, Mary, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Making things worse. I'm just going to divorce you quietly. I'm not going to humiliate you. What are you doing talking about this? Just put yourself in his shoes. And imagine what the town would have been saying about him. We always imagine, again, and rightly so, what people would have been saying about Mary. Imagine what they would have been saying about Joseph, whispering behind his back that his little bride couldn't even wait for him, was unfaithful to him. Imagine the way the men would have treated him, the stories that would have been told. Just put yourself for a few moments in Joseph's shoes. And then, in the midst of all of this, an angel of the Lord comes to Joseph in a dream with the Word of God and tells him, Joseph, it's all true. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Don't. What she told you is true. That baby that's conceived in her is the Son of God. She will give birth to a baby boy, the Son of God, and you are to give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This all happened in order to fulfill what the prophet Isaiah said 700 years before Jesus' birth as another showing that God always keeps his promise and always does what he says. Now put yourself in Joseph's shoes. How would you handle all this? Well, Joseph heard God's word and the word of God informed him of the truth and worked the truth inside of him. And Joseph, this good and decent man, did exactly what the Lord said through his word that he should do. He took Mary, married her, and was a stepfather to Jesus, raising the Son of God, giving Him the name God told Him to give, Jesus, Yeshua, God saves, and raising Him as His own Son. The only way, just imagine for a second, the only way Joseph could have known the only possible way that he would have known who that child is, the child that Mary was carrying, the child he knew was not his own, was because he was blessed by the Word of God to be told, to be shown, to have that declared to him. You know the rest of the story. Put yourself in Joseph's shoes now again in a different way. Because in many ways, you and I are in Joseph's shoes. We're here today on the fourth Sunday of Advent, fourth Sunday of Advent preparing for Christmas. But the way we look at Christmas isn't the way the world looks at Christmas. People all over the world are going to be celebrating Christmas. But they're going to be celebrating all sorts of things that have nothing to do with the birth of the Savior world. They're going to be celebrating Christmas with parties and decorations and festivities. They're going to be celebrating Christmas by giving gifts and talking about human beings being at peace with one another and getting along better and stopping our warring ways. They're going to be getting together for all kinds of reasons that have nothing to do 
with a 2,700-year-old prophecy declared by God's Word that said, Behold, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. A virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son, and you will call Him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So it's not so hard to put ourselves in Joseph's shoes, is it? Because the world sadly doesn't believe and acknowledge what we know to be true. In fact, I mentioned a minute ago about the scandal that Mary and Joseph would have endured. Although we certainly treat these matters with love as Christians because we know we're all sinners. But the world today wouldn't even treat an unwed mother being pregnant as a scandal. We know it's, it is and we know it's wrong because the Bible tells us it is. The Bible tells us it's wrong, but the rest of the world's going, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you narrow-minded, bigoted, sheltered people? It's not so hard to imagine being in Joseph's shoes. Because in the middle of all this, in the middle of our culture that tells us Christmas really is supposed to start in October, when you have trees and decorations and sales going on before Halloween even gets here. And we know that Christmas is about the birth of the Savior. We know that those other things, the decorations and the parties, the family get-togethers, which are wonderful, but all the other stuff is just window dressing. We know that what this holiday this day that we celebrate every year is all about is truly the birth of Emmanuel. The birth of God with us. The one who loved us so much that he took on our form to become one of us to come and save us from ourselves. To save us in a way that we couldn't by becoming our substitute and growing up from that little baby in a manger to the man, the God-man, who took our sins to the cross. To that, the world says we're crazy. To that, the world whispers behind our back the same way the townspeople would have whispered behind Joseph's back. But how do we know? How do we know that's true? How do we know this is what Christmas is all about? Because the Word of God has been given to us too. The Word of God through Isaiah the prophet that tells us how the Christ child would come. The Word of God through Matthew that tells us about the birth of Jesus. The Word of God through Luke that tells us about the birth of Jesus. The Word of God in St. John that tells us the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. It's not so hard to put ourselves in Joseph's shoes, is it? And I pray that today and throughout the rest of your journey to Christmas, you will continue to remember Joseph and how the Lord blessed him and used him, and remember how you today stand in his shoes, how the Lord has blessed you and used you and continues to use you to heed his word and to proclaim the truth of his love for the world, the love that he showed when he sent his son so that all of us who believe in Him would not die but have everlasting life. That's Christmas. And that's walking in Joseph's shoes. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.